guys and welcome back to the crawl room. We're here once again in this wonderful ranty room for all things Formula One. And it boiled over, didn't it, at Silverstone? It boiled over. The kettle was screaming. It was going <coughs> for so many races. Then we had that lull period and Lewis Hamilton thought, no, 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 I need to close this gap down. What do I do? Lunged up the inside at Cops, sending his main rival not only into the wall, but also into a local hospital. Potentially, I'm hearing, I don't know how true it is at the moment, potentially crack ribs or rib for Max Verstappen after that huge, huge shunt. 51 Gs of impact over 150 mile an hour. So hopefully all the best to Max Verstappen. We wish him well. We hope he can make the next race as well. I think we've got a gap. I don't think it's immediately next week, is it? So should be okay to go. Uh, but yeah, fingers crossed that Max Verstappen is all right. I'm going to apologise in advance if this video gets done incredibly quickly. I've had to shut all my windows, doors, turn the lights on to get this video recorded. And it's 27 and a half degrees and climbing. So I am sweating my tits off. <laughs> Just like I was for the majority of that race, to be fair. So we're going to kick things off, of course, with the race winner, Lewis Hamilton. And it's no surprise, it's one of these. I'm on the door now. Arrods, now fight me. <laughs> Yes, of course it is Palmer of the week to Lewis Hamilton. The stewards might have only given me a 10 second time penalty. It's just ironic, isn't it, how the previous race weekend I was saying, oh, it's a five second time penalty if you kill a man. Well, Hamilton only got a 10 second for attempted murder, didn't he? I would just like to say, of course, that I'm not saying Hamilton deliberately took him out or deliberately tried to kill him. That is not what I'm saying at all. But Hamilton went far too shallow into Cop's corner after being squeezed by Max. He tried to back out because he was alongside, realised he wasn't going to make the corner tried to back out and as he was backing out tagged the back of Max so it was hands down Lewis's fault and unfortunately when you do that much damage to another rival another car anyone it didn't have to be Max it could have hit anyone like that I'm afraid that's a drive-through at minimum it was a drive-through at minimum in my personal opinion had Max done it the other way around it would have been a drive-through at minimum a lot of people are going to say you're just hating on Lewis because you don't like Lewis no I've, I always said I wanted a championship fight and this has closed the gap right up but I didn't want to see it like that just as much as I wouldn't have want to see the gap extended anymore if Max had done that on Lewis. So, yeah, I, I think 10 seconds was, was very lenient, very lenient. And this is the first time. I mean, let's not forget George Russell in that sprint qualifying race just tagged, just tagged Carlos Sainz going into Woodcote, was it, I believe? And, uh, yeah, sent him wide and Sainz stayed in the race and recovered to P11. And, uh, yeah, he got a three-place grid drop for that. So he got a worse penalty for a slight bit of contact than Hamilton did ultimately winning the race as a result of 10 seconds added to his st pit stop time. So there you go. That's the FIA for you. It's, it's Palmer of the Week for Hamilton this weekend from me personally. Uh, he's closed the gap up. If you're so happy to celebrate that, all the fans celebrating at Silverstone, it was good to see an English winner, I'm sure, without a doubt. But there's got to be an air of, yeah, he's, he's kind of took his rival out there to do that. But, you know, it, whatever, whatever, you know... I, if I keep going on about it, the more I'll get annoyed about it. So yeah, Palmer of the Week to Lewis Hamilton. Unfortunately for him, he made that mistake. The FIA weren't le weren't harsh enough, in my opinion. And yeah, if, if, if they want to win like that today, then they can. That's all I'm going to say to that. Next up, it is Sha La La. It's Shalala and it's Shalala on his way into the lead of the race. Unbelievable stuff. He had no business being in the lead for that amount of time. I'm so happy for Charles. Unfortunately, the wind didn't come his way there. He was suffering with engine management issues as well, wasn't he? Cutting out and having to do a reset on the steering wheel and carry on again. Uh, yeah, unbelievable. Charles fantastic effort a phenomenal drive i've been criticizing him a lot recently saying that science has been on the back of him and ahead of him for quite a number of races now monaco making the silly error in qualifying of course to not start from pole position and yeah it's sent to have just slipped away from charles but here he is taking his first podium of the season the second podium of the season for ferrari and yeah, he has dominated that race by Ferrari standards. Uh, Science unable to really climb through the field. He did a good job, but uh, didn't climb through as well as Charles. And that means that Shalala is going to get 15 points on this cruel room. He's getting 15 points. That was worthy. A worthy effort. I know the tangled up front, but the restart he did after that red flag period was phenomenal. He led Hamilton by about two seconds. It was it was a great, great drive. So congratulations to Shalala. It was phenomenal effort. So 15 points thoroughly deserved. My driver of the day, without a doubt. Unbelievable stuff. So well done, Sha. You are the driver of the day. And it's a long time since I uh, last praised you. So yeah, there you go. Shalala. 15 points on the grill room. And then we come to Valtteri Bottas. Oh, Valtteri. 
You're disqualified on the cruel room, and this is why. This is why. Oh, can you let it through? Please, please let Hamilton through. He's on a penalty. We can't bear it. Oh, no. So, yeah, Valtteri Bottas. If I, I'm not being funny, mate, but you know you're gone at the end of the season anyway. If, if they'd have said, Valtteri is James, I'd just go, oh, fucking park it up, lads. I'm off. I'm going to get a pint. I'm going to go celebrate with rest at crowd. Hamilton's win. All right. See you later, lads. What's the point in finishing like that? At least have a fight. With, I mean, they lost out anyway. I mean, the pace of Hamilton after he got past Bottas. But at least make them look like they're having a bit of a race, will you? Not just get it. Oh, just, ah. Oh. This is why I don't like Mercedes, isn't it, really? But never mind. I, I, I appreciate team orders in certain circumstances. But then this one, I was like, let Bottas have a chance. He's not fucked his race up like Hamilton has. Um, but yeah, there you go. Bottas disqualified. <laughs> And then we come to Lando, Lando Norris, a Brit almost getting on the podium. What a shame, a slow stop for McLaren. Popped in behind Valtteri Bottas and obviously made the overtake in the pits, did our Valtteri, after a quick stop by the Mercedes squad, put him ahead. Had Lando had a decent stop and, you know, I think I think he'd have lost out to Bottas anyway, uh, but lost about four seconds, didn't he? So when he came out of the pits, he was already outside the DRS window of Bottas, so just couldn't keep up with the momentum of the Mercedes once it was through. It was OK to keep it behind, but he couldn't get back ahead of it. So, yeah, Lando Norris, a perfect race this weekend. Just a shame he missed out on the podium. I thought it was going to be a, a good one for, po for a podium finish there. Um... Leclerc was on fire. Something was in his pants this weekend and he was on fire. So he was never going to beat that Ferrari somehow. That was special, that wasn't it? I'm going to keep going on about that for a long, long time. Uh, but yeah, Lando Norris, 10 points on the cruel room. Once again, impeccable. Finished best of the rest. Minus Leclerc, but Leclerc was a superstar. Uh, yeah, full 10 points to uh, Lando there. Did the best job he could. Maybe, just maybe, could have scraped a podium had it not been for that slow pit stop. But no fault of his own. So well done, Lando. Full 10 points! And then we come to Daniel Ricciardo and a fantastic weekend by Daniel Ricciardo standard. Has he found his mojo again? Because I said this before, didn't I? After he had a good race in Spain, I was like, yeah, he's got it now. And then he lost it again. So I'm not sure if he's going to keep this momentum going forward to the next race. But it was good to see him up there. It was good to see him just one place behind Lando finishing in P5. And only qualifying one place behind Lando in P5. Seven and then P6, wasn't it? I think that's how it worked for the qualifying, then the sprint qualifying. I'm not really going to talk about the sprint qualifying that much, apart from when we get to the one that got penalties, George. I've already mentioned it. But the sprint qualifying worked well, I think, in terms of certain drivers and then others not. So, you know, I don't know if it's, a, I don't know if it's the future of the sport. I think it'll need tweaking to maybe less laps, actually, if uh, we're going to keep with it. But it was something different, wasn't it? So I'm not criticising them for trying it. At least they're not going all guns blazing and having it for the full season and it being crap. So, yeah, there you go. But, yeah, for for uh, Daniel Ricciardo, not as good as his teammate, but very, very close. It's nine points to Danny Rick. I think that was a solid drive there to get P5 on the road, just behind your teammate in both sessions. That's a big, big boost to his confidence and a full nine points on the cruel room. So, yeah, well done, Danny Rick. And then we come to Carlos Sainz, and I'm not going to criticise him too much because I think he had a solid race and I think he finished where Ferrari deserve to finish. It was close to Ricardo, just couldn't get around him or past him, unfortunately. The dirty air, Silverstone's a long circuit, and it was just struggling, wasn't it? There were so many cars that got stuck within half a second of each other and just couldn't make the moves. Science was one of them on Ricardo, unfortunately, but he had a good race. He had a good race. He had, he had an okay qualifying, but it was it was down the order, wasn't he? It was down in ninth. That put him in the uh, window of attack from Russell in the sprint qualifying, which made a bit of contact, went all the way down the back of the grid. And, uh, yeah, that that kind of, he elevated his way back into 11th, so that was decent. And here he is finishing P6, a great, great drive. So it's going to be a solid eight points for Science. It was a good race by him. And I don't want to criticise what he's done because it was solid. But like I keep mentioning, Leclerc was the superstar. So, yeah, eight points to Science. But when Leclerc's in that form, he's unstoppable against anyone. So, yeah, very, very well done to Science. I don't want to criticise him too much, as already mentioned. Eight points, I think, is fair. And then we come to Fernando Alonso, probably the driver of the sprint qualifying session. It's not a race, it's a session. Um, yeah, bizarre, isn't it? But yeah, I mean, Alonso did fantastically well, didn't he? Elevated himself up six places initially off the line on lap one, which was unbelievable. I never expected anyone to do that, because I just thought they'd gain on the good starts, bad starts, then just stay in formation. Well, Alonso went charging around the outside of everyone, and it worked. He lost out to the two McLarens as he was on the soft tyre, but a great strategy by Alpine put both of those Alpine cars with inside the top ten. And here he is, uh, Alonso, finishing where he qualified, 
Yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah, he, st he finished the race where he qualified after the sprint qualifying session. And uh, yeah, well done to Le uh, Fernando Alonso. Certainly finding his feet once again. Had a couple of battles on track as well this race. It's going to be a full 10 points to him. That was impressive. Very, very happy with that. And good to see Alonso finding form. Generally surprising me now. So yeah, well done to Fernando for that. A full 10 points on the Cruel Room. Very happy with that. Good to see him doing well. Good to see the Alpine team getting a double points finish as well. His teammate will come to in a second. Uh, but yeah, very, very good by Alpine this weekend. Fantastic effort. Well done, Fernando. Next up, it's Lance Stroll, and I'd love to know how he got here, but I can't really remember, because I was too busy watching the battle up front. I think he obviously gained from, obviously, Gasly's puncture, uh, Perez's many pit stops at the end, so that obviously elevated him up a bit. Did he overtake Ocon on track? I think he did, but I don't think we saw it on TV, so again, apologies. But Stroll, I think he had a he had a poor qualifying in comparison to his teammate Vettel, but picked up the points when it mattered. So for that reason, it's going to be eight points to Lance Stroll. Might be a little bit harsh that it maybe could deserve another one. But nonetheless, a solid drive by the Aston Martin driver there to pick up a few points for the team. Uh, yeah, P8 was a fantastic effort considering his teammate was P nowhere. Uh, but yeah, well done, Lance Stroll. Eight points to you. And then we come to Esteban Ocon, uh, an improved Esteban Ocon. He had a couple of dismal races at Austria, didn't he? That was terrible, that. Um, but here he is, picking up a few points. Had a good qualifying sprint, just like his teammate, as the, as mentioned, Alpine elected to start those drivers on the softs for that session. And then in this race, he started where he qualified as well, I think. I think he, or did he qualify 10th and finish 9th? Either way, I can't remember how it worked. But yeah, he, he finished in the points, got a couple of points. A good, solid double points finish for Alpine this weekend. Not as good as his teammate once again, though. So it is. Eight points to Esteban Ocon as well. Solid effort. Very happy with that. Next up, and last of the points finishers, is Yuki Tsunoda. He certainly had the luck of the draw this weekend to scrape that final point. Gasly's puncture, Raikkonen's spin, and of course Perez's many pit stops elevated him from 13th to 10th in the last few dying laps. And there he was, P10, picking up one final point. So well done, Yuki, for that. It was a difficult qualifying and difficult qualifying sprint, though, for him, staying 16 throughout both. And he didn't look like he was going to be scoring any points until those last few laps. So for that reason, I think Yuki Tsunoda deserves a solid 7. I think that's a generous 7, but I want to try and give him a confidence boost there. I was thinking 5, but I'm thinking, no, we got a point. And he did maintain ahead of Gasly, despite Gasly's late charge with the fresh tyre after the puncture. Um, so, yeah, I think a solid 7 is fair. Hopefully that's a confidence boost. I'm sure Elmer Marco will still be whinging at him, but there you go. Uh, I want to give him a little bit of boost. So let's spread the love, Yuki. Seven points on the board. Maybe generous, but he did pick up a point. So well done, Yuki Sonoda. And then we come to Pierre Gasly. And I'm going to say the curious case of Pierre Gasly this weekend. I normally say it for Ricardo, but Gasly this weekend just didn't look to have the pace, did he, in comparison uh, to what he normally does? Uh, obviously still out qualifying and out racing Sonoda for the most part, but... He's normally into Q3 quite comfortably. This time around, he was out in Q2, around the P12, P11 area. He stayed there for the sprint qualifying race around that area. And then in the race, it was the majority in that position again, in around the 11th, 12th area. Elevated himself into P9, and then he had the puncture. So he dropped down to 13th, 14th, and elevated himself back up to 11th, just on the cusp of points. Just missing out beating his teammate at the end by a couple of seconds. Um, so Gasly's going to get the same score score as Sonoda this weekend which is seven because Sino uh, Gasly it must be the car around the circuit without a doubt obviously just not suited to Silverstone because Gasly looked to be off the pace in comparison to what he normally is but all in all I think it was a solid seven weekend by, by Gasly's standard and had he not been for that puncture it'd have been P8 potentially P9 so yeah a bit of a shame there but solid seven to Gasly I don't want to take anything away from him for that but not the best we've seen of him. And then we come to George, George, George of the Russell. Watch out for them points because once again he doesn't score any, does he? Oh, what a shame. Qualified P8 in on merit in the qualifying session. The sprint qualifying, he finished P9. Then he got a bullshit three-place grid drop for the slightest bit of contact you've ever seen with Carlos Sainz. Sainz recovered well as well, so it wasn't as if Sainz was out of the race, unlike Max Verstappen in the race, but that's okay. We'll not talk about that anymore. Um, but yeah... I think, you know, it was a harsh penalty. Qualified P12, dropped down to around P14, P15, and then elevated himself back up to 12th in the last few laps. It was it was almost 11th, wasn't it? It was, all, it was 11th briefly after Raikkonen's spin, but of course, uh, Gasly came charging through on his fresh tyres, putting him back down to P12 again. Yeah, it would have, have been even... Uh, to be honest, I'm happy with P12, because had he finished P11 again, out, around... 
his own circuit would have been even more gutting. So at least P12 is two places away and it's not quite as heartbreaking for him. But overall, I think he did a solid job this weekend again. Gave the Williams team something to cheer about. So for that reason, it's nine points on the board this weekend. I don't think it was a perfect weekend. The mistake that he did make on science, even though I don't think it was a three-place grid drop, it gave himself opportunity to be, to be punished. And the lower team you are down the field, the more penalties you get. So there you go. Unfortunately, he left the door wide open for criticism and he got the three places. So yeah, nine points to George Russell. Perfect weekend in my eyes. Not in the stewards, uh, but yeah, it'd been a shame. It was a shame not to see you start inside the top ten after the, a fabulous, fabulous couple of qualifying sessions. And then we come to Antonio Giovinazzi, the Italian stallion, once again. Here he is languishing around P nowhere, P13. Difficult race weekend once again by Alfa Romeo, especially Giovinazzi. He struggled. He, he didn't struggle in the first qualifying. The spring qualifying, he tumbled down. And then in the race, he was middling and mizzing around a little bit in the mid-pack. And Raikkonen was ahead of him for the most part. Then Raikkonen binned it. And here he is finishing P13. Nothing to celebrate. Nothing to write home about. Just one of those things, unfortunately, for Giovinazzi. So, yeah, another quiet, lonely weekend by Alfa Romeo. And another sigh of relief by the Alfa Romeo team that Williams didn't score points once again. Because they're going to get them, aren't they? I hope they get them. I really hope they get them. They do deserve them now. And, and Alfa Romeo are just kind of looking into the fact that Williams aren't scoring points due to mechanical failures or penalties, etc. So they've got to really consider themselves lucky, haven't they, to be honest, Alfa Romeo, these last few races especially. Need to get their act together and need to get consistent. So... Antonio is going to be six points on the board to him, a generous six, I know. Um, but yeah, I do like Alfa Romeo and I think I need something to smile about. So yeah, Giovinazzi, six points on the board. I was going to give him five, but I thought, what, what's what's an extra point? Eh? Uh, so there he is, six points on the board to Antonio. Uh, 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 no mistakes this weekend, but nothing special. And then we come to Nicholas Latifi disqualified on the Cruel Room because he's garbage. And this weekend they finished dead of quite a few cars, but I'm not bothered. He did nothing, did he? Out in Q1 and out in like just qualifying sprint, he was still shiting at the back and just nothing, nothing again. So he's disqualified, he remains disqualified, he will for the rest of the season. And uh, yeah, get rid. And then we come to Kimi Raikkonen, was looking like he was on the verge of points there. Maybe he could have scraped that one point away from Sonoda had he not just lazily gone into the side of Perez there. I didn't understand what that was all about, to be honest with you, because Perez had got the job done on much fresher tyres, and then Raikkonen just sort of lunged up the inside, and it was always going to result in a spin for one of them, and it was a spin for Raikkonen, and down he tumbled outside the points, or any chance of the points at least. So, yeah, Raikkonen again, another late incident in a race, and cost him a good finishing position. It wouldn't have been points, but it might have been. Um... Yeah, just a shame again from Kimi to see that at the end of the race after he'd done all the hard work in the sprint qualifying of making up for a bad qualifying to get himself up into around 13th, wasn't it? And then in the race, he was there for the most part inside the top 12, top 13 area. And like I said, at the end there where Gasly had the pit stop, Perez had the extra pit stop, it put him into P11. And yeah, OK, Perez were coming through, but you could have just followed Perez through and seen what would have happened, you know, but... He didn't, did he? And there he is, spinning, and what a shame. So, yeah, three points to Kimi Raikkonen for that one. A big, big shame that he couldn't have finished the race where he deserved to be, which was inside the top 12. And then we come to Sergio Perez. I'm on five live, but no one listens to the radio, you bastards. And it had to be, didn't it, I'm afraid. Sergio Perez offered nothing to Red Bull this weekend. They're on a slightly compromised strategy after the pitted early on the hard tyres during the race. Uh, that meant he had to do two stops, which put him outside the points. But he could have got P9, P8, somewhere around there. But then he had an additional stop, I believe, for a potential puncture after the contact with Raikkonen. Not confirmed, however. Or it might have just been that Red Bull were like, we're not going to get points. Or we're only going to get one point. Let's pit him and nick the fastest lap point off of Hamilton. Stop him having 26 points instead of 25. So... Could have been for that as well, but I'm hearing potential puncture, but I'm not 100% confident. Um, but yeah, he had to get Palmer of the Week. He binned it. He had a, he had a poor qualifying uh, to finish fifth instead of fourth. He had his lap time deleted for track limits. He was nowhere near Bottas, who gave a toe to Hamilton all weekend. And uh, even if Perez was giving a toe all weekend to Max, which he wasn't, he was running his own race, should have been closer. Uh, and then in the re in the sprint qualifying, he spun because he had a bad start and fell behind the two McLarens. Started at the back, changed all the setup, started from pit lane, and made progress, but not enough. And then here he is, finishing nowhere, and he would have only finished about ninth or tenth anyway. So they've still been getting Palmer, 
Uh, yeah, so here he is, Palmer of the Week, to Sergio Perez. A big, big shame. No points for Red Bull this weekend. Ah, oh, dear me. And then we come to Nikita Mars' spin. What's he doing here? Is ahead of someone. He's ahead of another Haas, isn't he? Well, we don't score in points on the Cruel Room, and as you know, Dan Mushy Gaming, the fabulous guy that does all the tables and results, uh, has his own fun with Nikita, and he's making a sentence, so you'll look forward to that at the end when the scoreboard pops up. But yeah, Nikita Marzi spin. An okay race, I guess, but I'm not awarding him nothing. Ha <laughs> ha, twats. And then we come to Mick Schumacher, and finishing behind his teammate... I'm afraid it's short and sweet. It's only three points. It's only three points, Mick. I don't know what happened there. Maybe he had an issue. I'm not sure. But he was only a couple of seconds behind Marzi spin. So, I don't know. Maybe he had to have an extra pit stop. We don't really see what happens down at the back of the field, do we, unfortunately? If I do find out it was something that was untoward, uh, then I will maybe boost his scores in the next race. But, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, Marzi spin had to beat Schumacher at some point. And it was at Silverstone, so there you go. So yeah, just three points on the board to Mick. I await further information on why that happened, but it could have just been racecraft today. And then we come to Sebastian Vettel. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. Yes, I've missed singing that so much, and Vettel went right round, 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 didn't he, at the exit of the Luffield Corner. Uh, yeah. He just went round, 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 round and was outside the points for all the race and then they had to retire the car due to an issue. So I'm being a little bit lenient with him because had he finished down there with no points, he'd have been a Palmer. The retirement escaped him from that. But instead of giving him the usual five points to do for a retirement, it's only going to be four. And uh, the reason for that is because he had that spin and he was doing badly after it. So yeah, four points to Vettel, let off lightly by that retirement. Had it not been for that, he'd have been getting Palmer. So consider yourself lucky, Vettel. Let's hope you improve for the Hungary, though, because, of course, I was singing your praises the last few races, so I want you to get back up there so I can sing your praises more, because I do enjoy singing your praises, but I like taking the piss as well. So we've got a fine balance going at the moment, Sebastian. I want you to do well at Hungary. And then last, but by no means least, is, of course, Max Verstappen, the retirement on lap one after getting taken out by his main title rival there. Just glad he's okay. The car's destroyed. Lucky that that tyre, when it came off the right rear of Max's car, didn't go into the crowd. It was incredibly lucky that that stayed low. And yeah, hearing potentially crack wet ribs. So get well soon, Max. Uh, didn't deserve that to happen to anyone, uh, let alone him. After doing so, so well in the uh, sprint qualifying to get ahead of Hamilton after Hamilton did a stunning lap to qualify on pole. Uh, yeah, there you go. It's just a middle of the road five points, unfortunately. I do it with all the retirements. I, I can't award anything for the race because I don't know what would have happened. He was out on lap one and, and that was that. But the key thing is that Max appears to be okay. Potentially cracked ribs. I hope that doesn't affect the next race weekend if it is any injury like that. He is currently at a local hospital now after being moved from the medical centre. As we saw, he was he was awake, he was conscious, he was moving, he got out of the car by himself and of course he went into the ambulance, walked into the ambulance himself. So we know it's nothing life-threatening. But nonetheless, still not good to see a 51G impact at over 150 mile an hour. Uh, so yeah, best wishes to Max Verstappen. I hope he gets well soon. Uh, not the way I wanted to see the title uh, happen, to be honest. I, I don't want to see things like that. But, you know, it happened now. We've got to move on. We've got to refocus. And Red Bull clearly put Mercedes under pressure this weekend uh, for something like that to happen. So they've got to look at the positives there. And I'm sure they'll come back stronger in Hungary. So there you go, guys. That was the runners and riders of the Silverstone Grand Prix, the British Grand Prix, of course. Let me know your thoughts and feedback down below. Did I score any too high, any too low? What are your thoughts on that incident? Because that's going to be the talking point in this comment section. I know it is. And I look forward to all your thoughts and feedback. If you are going to have a rant at me and moan at me and everything, then that's absolutely fine. I don't care less. There is also, by the way, while I keep on ranting, are on the screen now. And yes, there you go. The runners and riders are updated. Thank you so, so much to Mushy Gaming, as always, for doing these points. And thank you so, so much to F1 Games PlayStation, Mr. Dave, for doing the Jolie and Palmer skits that you all know and love. I look forward to hearing from you all in the comment section. And all I'm going to say this time is there's going to be a lot of difference, difference of opinion in terms of the incident, not just my own opinion, but people commenting. So please keep it respectful if you can. I know we like banter on this uh, series, and I know that's what it's all about, discussion. But if there's any idiots being absolute dickheads like I've seen in the past, I'm not going to tolerate it. You can slag me off all you want, but do not slag anyone off in the comment section that are leaving their thoughts. I will not approve of it. So yeah, thank you so, so much for watching, guys. And as always, much love.